for the integers, if you go one level above the rational numbers, or one, uh, one level above the whole numbers, you get in integers. Integers do negative numbers, okay? So, uh, well, they introduce negative whole numbers. So when you have your natural numbers here, we you went up to the whole numbers, whole numbers introduce zero, anything to the power of zero is one. Now, if you put a negative number in the little box up there, what it does to the big box, it flips it. So, if you had five in the big box and negative three here, the way it worked, the way, what the negative number would do, um, it would put it one over five to the power of three. So you use up the negative to flip the number five, okay? And if the number, if the base number, if this number is in the bottom to a negative power, what it does, it kicks it up. If it's a fraction in the, in the big box, what it does, it flips it. The bottom goes up top and the top goes to the bottom if you have a negative exponent, okay? So let's talk about integers, negative numbers. Negative numbers, a to the power of negative one. And negative power means if the number is on the top, you kick it down. That's the base. So what this means is this goes down and becomes 1 over a to the power of 1. So if you had a to the power of negative 2, this would be 1 over a squared. Now, it also works the other way around. So if it's on the top, that's a negative power, it kicks it down. If it's in the bottom, then if it's a negative power, it kicks it up. So if you had... 2 over a to the negative 3, well, the negative power down here kicks the a up top. So this becomes 2 to the power of 2a cubed. Now this cube only applies to the a because there is no bracket here saying it applies to both of them. So keep, your, uh, uh, keep track of your variables and your numbers. Don't do operations to numbers that they're not supposed to be done to. This also applies to a fraction. So if it's up top, if it's a negative power, it kicks it down. If it's in the bottom, negative power kicks it up. Well, if it's a fraction to a negative power, it just flips it. So if you had a over b to the negative 2, okay, all that does is deal with the negative number. It takes the a, kicks it down. It takes the b, kicks it up. So this would be b over a to the power of after the integers, we had rational numbers. Now, rational numbers are basically fractions. Any number that repeats or terminates is a fraction, okay? So the way it works with fractions is, if you have two over three, the denominator in the exponent becomes a radical, becomes the root. So if, um, okay, let's take a green. I'm gonna do this thing right down here, okay? So if you have, a, if you have any, any number in the base and put it to a fraction, what happens is the top number in the fraction is the numerator, I think that's what they call it. That acts like the natural numbers or the whole numbers. Well, you wouldn't put zero in the fraction. That acts like natural numbers. So the top number, it just clones whatever is in the base, okay? The denominator in the exponent goes to the root. So for example, I'm gonna do um, five to the power of two over three. Let's do that. What do we got? Let me go over here. We got five to the power of two over three. The way it works is that three in the denominator moves to the, to the radical in front of the five, okay? It'll be like two more minutes. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so the way it works is we got a skater over there. He wants to skate. Uh, he's uh, being nice, taking a break. Uh, so what we got is uh, five to the power of two over three. And what it does is it grabs the three in the denominator and moves it to the front of the five. And it becomes the radical, okay, the root symbol. So that's the way 
rational numbers work. It works is a to the power of 2 over 3. And if you want to write this in radical form, okay, this would be you take 3, you move it up front under the root symbol, okay? So this would be the cube root of a squared. Make sense? What if you had, you could go the other way around as well. What if you had the fifth root of a to the power of 10? Well, the way this works is this number here goes in the denominator in the power. So this would be a to the power of 10 over 5. And 10 divided by 5 is just 2. So the answer to this would be a squared. Okay. So this rule, this property, helps you to reduce, to evaluate things, simplify things. Let's do a few more so this really sinks in. If I said, hey, what's 4? To a power of a half. Well, we talked about it, and you should know by now that the two here goes in the root symbol, so this is just the square root of four. Now, what does the square root of four mean? Um, you should have already told me that the square root of four is two, right? The way it works is this radical, this root symbol here is a boundary. And the way it works is the number here tells you what's required to go past this boundary, either this way or this way. Right now, this is a root. That was a 2. So this just means square root of 4. Square root of 4, you break it down into its prime factors. So what the radical here means is for you to go from the inside out, you need two things that are the same and two things combined to become one thing. So you pair these guys up, these guys come outside of the root symbol, and two roots coming out, there's nothing else left in there. So square root of four becomes two. Now, this applies to any number that's in the root. So for example, actually let's do one more square root first. Let's say if I said, hey, what's eight to a power of a half? Well, eight to a power of a half square root of 8, right? Yeah. Square root of 8 is, let's see what it is, it's 2 times 2 times 2. Now, as we said, this radical symbol here, this root symbol, because that's a 2, there's no other number here, it means you're looking for pairs. So you start pairing up your numbers. So two twos can come out of this symbol, move this way as a single, so they join together. So two twos become a 2. And what's left inside the root symbol? Inside the root symbol, you still have a two left, so you write it down there. So eight to a power of a half is a square root of eight. A square root of eight becomes two root two. Now that, if you remember, is an irrational number because it's the root of a prime number. That means the number there doesn't end, um, doesn't end or repeat. So it keeps on going, changes up, no pattern to it. So this applies to any uh, radical. So for example, what if you had, what's the cube root What's the cube root of 8? Well, as a power, that would have been 8 to the power of a third, right? So that would be the cube root of 8. Well, 8 you can break down into prime numbers, which are 2 times 2 times 2. For In this case, this is a cube root. So what that means is you're looking for triplets. Triplets. So you combine three things that are the same. There's three twos here. So the rule is, the boundary or the toll for you to go from the inside out, you need triplets. Triplets become one. So these three twos come out of this and they become a two. Now you took everything out of the root symbol, uh, the cube root symbol, so there's nothing left. So the cube root of eight, or eight to a power of a third is a cube root of eight, which is just two. Then you had 27 to the power of two over now, if you remember, if you want to crunch numbers, reduce numbers, uh, or simplify things, 
you want to reduce the numbers first instead of making them bigger, right? Uh, remember when we were doing multiplying fractions, you didn't multiply all the numbers on top, multiply the numbers on the bottom and then break them into the prime numbers, kill them, right? What you did was kill whatever you could kill and then multiply things up. So the same type of principle works here. When you're evaluating numbers, simplifying numbers, what you want to do is reduce them first and then make them bigger if you have to. So